Okay. And Bill, enlighten us today. Good morning, John. Thank you. And welcome, everyone, to the third of our home automation workshop, Lights, Doorbells, Locks, and Cameras. It's a, going to be a discussion of the products that are available to make your home interactive with your lifestyle. This is the third of a series of four. Our last session will be December 8th, doing it yourself as having it done. Today is Veterans Day, a day that we honor those who served. From me and APCUG, I'd like to thank you for your service. So as an introduction, we're going to um, talk a lot about the products that are really available on the market. Some that you may be familiar with, others you may not. But the allure of a smart home is strong. You can unlock your smart um, door locks with your phone walk into your house, have the lights turn on automatically, and ask your virtual assistant to make you a cup of coffee. When you're not there, a robot vacuum will clean your place. Your smart thermostat will dial down the heat to keep costs down, and you can monitor everything from your phone with indoor and outdoor security cameras. So there are many different products and so many different ecosystems. And when I say ecosystems, we're talking about environments like um, Hue, uh, Wink, names that you will uh, come to know and uh, as we go to this presentation. But my recommendation to get started uh, making your home smart is to break it down into smaller pieces. Start with one or two gadgets. You want to pick a category. With so many different products um, and so many uh, ecosystems, building a smart home can feel like an overwhelming logic puzzle. But as with any task, you can make it easier by breaking it down into smaller pieces. So, Doing so, we want to pick a category. We want to narrow the field by features. Maybe you really like the idea of turning your lights on with your voice. Or perhaps you want to be able to lock your doors from your phone. Pick a category and do a bit of research on the available devices. You'll probably find that you can narrow down the field considerably by features that appeal to you and the compatibility a particular device has with other platforms. A lot of people start with a smart home security device or several and sometimes graduate to a more sophisticated system. A smart home security system connects to your Wi-Fi network so you can monitor and control your devices using your smartphone and an app. Entry-level systems usually include some door and window sensors a motion detector, a hub that communicates with those devices. Using more of uh, one or more wireless protocols such as Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, Zigbee, or a proprietary mesh network. You can add extra door monitor, mo I'm sorry, you can add extra door motion and window sensors to provide coverage for your entire house and build a comprehensive system that includes door locks, garage door openers, indoor, outdoor surveillance cameras, lights, sirens, smoke, CO detectors, water sensors, and more. So let's begin with um, uh, lights, doorbells, locks, and cameras. That's what we're going to talk about today. But beginning um, your home automation project requires some decisions to be made. The core of any home automation project, in my opinion, are smart lamps. Maybe I'm biased because that's what I started out with. And I felt that because lights are the simplest to install 
to manage. And there's many choices and today we will examine what is available and meet your needs and your budget. We also will discuss video doorbells and what's available, how they differ, what is required uh, for installation, as well as we'll talk about thermostats. Locks and cameras have become an integral part of home automation security. Like lights and doorbells, there are many choices. And we look at those, uh, we'll look at those uh, today as well. So, your lights are boring. Fix that with some smart lamps. The proliferation of low powered LED bulbs has meant manufacturers are able to add features like wireless interfaces, RGB color changing LEDs to the otherwise drab world of mood lighting fixtures. What exactly is a smart lamp and what's out there? And what's so smart about them? Well, smart is generally a term given to a device once it gains the ability to communicate with other devices and software, enhancing its functionality. In the case of lamps, this could be as simple as turning on and off via mobile app, but it would make very uh, for it would make much for it would make a very compelling experience. The new generation of lamps can change color, adjust brightness, react to music, and much more. There are plenty of awesome smart home gadgets that can give your place some high-tech flavor, but few has the flair of smart bulbs. Getting your house out with smart bulbs not only is a handy way to help lower your power bill, but it's also a delightful way to keep your aesthetics in your home fresh. At the very minimum, a smart bulb will enable your control to, for you to control it remotely so you can turn it off with your, uh, if you accidentally left the house with it still on. Some will let you set schedules and integrate them with smart home automation so they can automatically turn on when you get home or automatically turn off when you leave. Many also include multiple white color temperatures and can include a full spectrum of colors. This lets you go for a vibrant white during the day, a calm glow in the evening, or rainbow hues during a party. You can also simulate a sunrise on some smart bulbs if you find waking up to a traditional arm too boring. I recently replaced the five or six lights I have in my kitchen, they're recessed lights. And I had just the regular incandescent bulbs, but uh, a couple of those went out, uh, ironically, this uh, last couple of weeks. So I decided, well, maybe it's time for me to upgrade those to smart lamps. And one of the things that were, uh, what I decided to get were uh, the bright white ones. And uh, I installed those and miraculously my kitchen looks like it's flooded with daylight. I was really surprised that wasn't what the, uh, my expectation, but that's some of the things that you can really do uh, to enhance some of the uh, uh, problem areas in your home that as we said, if, you're, if, it's, if your lights are boring, fix that with smart lamps. Now, one of the things that you wanna do when you start looking for um, um, for a smart bulb, um, as I say, smart lighting can really change your home life. Uh, but the first thing you need to do is to research. The first port of call is to check that the base fittings are correct for your home. Luckily, many bulb manufacturers make a variety of different fittings. And I've just given a, a example of some of the bases that uh, you'll find um, and uh, some of your uh, lamp fixtures. And so, uh, interesting enough, um, depends on the brand of smart bulb you buy, but there are lots of choices and the smart bulbs have uh, compatible um, light fixtures or light bulbs that will fit in those fixtures. So another thing that we need to think about 
and um, our hubs and uh, also whether they um, work on a protocol called Zigbee uh, and Z-Wave. And we, as we go through, we'll kind of uh, under, uh, give some explanation. And you might have questions about this later and uh, we can probably uh, give you a better uh, definition. But to function properly, uh, each integration should follow certain protocols. Uh, so um, that means that you're either going to um, uh, that you, that they're split into two camps: those who require a hub, and those that don't. And if they don't, that means they're either connecting to your router using Wi-Fi or to your phone using Bluetooth. If they need a hub, then the likelihood they are running on Zigbee or Z-Wave. And for the uninitiated, these are two wireless protocols that function like mesh networks. The benefit of a Zigbee and a Z-Wave network is that there's more, they're more stable and uh, they're not uh, putting much strain on your Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi bubs are growing into popularity due to the fact that they don't need a hub and can connect directly to your router. The main drawbacks there is connectivity. Uh, you need to have a strong Wi-Fi signal whenever uh, your bubs are, uh, which, uh, MISH Wi-Fi systems and Wi-Fi extenders can help. However, be careful not to overload your home network with all your lights. So there are a number of ones that are on the market that um, also come with Bluetooth and uh, the new Hue bulbs, the latest generation of those, they have Bluetooth built in, which will allow you to control those from your phone. But again, the obvious drawback for that is that you can't control them outside your house. So the next question is, what platforms to choose? You need to ask yourself, which ecosystem will you use? Do you live in an Alexa home? Is Google your friend? Or do you worship at the, um, the altar of the home kit? Make sure any smart lighting you buy plays nice with one another. Most bulbs will work with Alexa and Google Assistant. A smaller number will work with um, uh, the Apple home kit. So one of the things, if we get back to speaking about hubs, um, you want to look at what is the purpose of a smart automation home, I mean hub. Smart home automation hubs are a one-stop solution for unifying your connected gadgets and controlling them with one simple app instead of many. Uh, but not all hubs are created equal. Different hubs support different connectivity protocols so it's important to look for a hub that supports the devices that you use. And some of the choices are Bluetooth LE, the Lutron Clear Connect, Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, and Zigbee are proper ways to connect. So you want a bub that supports as many of those standards as possible. Also, you want some support for IFTTT, which will be useful if because it adds a way to configure and trigger your connected devices. Try to make the distinction between a bridge and a hub. If the device is solely dependent on a proprietary hub, that really means a bridge will become an integrated into the larger network with a master hub. And one of the things that you'll find out there that's really um, been 
um, easy to integrate is what's referred to as a Wink Hub, and that's a brand. A Wink Hub is also a device being uh, that integrates all your smart devices under one app. So it doesn't matter uh, what they are, whether you have Hububs or you have um, other brands, the Wink device uh, has the capability of connecting all of those under one master control. And there, it may also allows it to be easily customized and has um, um, other features. So it's a very important, it would become a very important part to your home uh, automation network. Like other devices you download, the app to your mobile device and begin with your, which will begin with your email address and a password. If it is your first time using the Wink app, you'll sign up to create an account and you can locate the Wink hub at least five feet away from your Wi-Fi router. The hub has a range up to 30 feet. You can then open the app, tap add a product and tap hub, then Wink Hub and follow the instructions in the app. So there are two versions of those that are available and uh, they work marvelously well and we'll talk about those some more. Bill, I, I, we're still seeing a brightness temperature and dimming slide. Yes, I know. I know. Okay. I'm, getting, I'm getting to that. I got ahead of myself. Thank you. So. Brightness, temperature, and dimming. Not all smart bulbs are born equal. Color temperatures within white bulbs, letting you shift from a colder white to a warmer yellow is an important feature. As I told you about the bulbs I just bought, uh, they have the capability of going from a really warm white to a bright white. And it's, uh, it's startling how much difference it is. So, um, When we get to that, we will talk about what's referred to as lumens. And uh, finally, you will want your smart lights to be dimmable. Chances are they won't work with an existing wall dimmer in your home. Uh, but some smart light brands now sell dimming devices are uh, worth thinking about. Of course, you'll be able to dim with the app voice control in most cases but sometimes you'll just want a good old fashioned light switch. But anyway, when we're talking about lum lumens, it's a formula to calculate uh, lumens to watts. And you'll find this in a lot of LED, you'll find that lumens being mentioned on LED bulbs. And they usually have a conversion. They'll tell you how many lumens equals the old incandescent bulb as uh, in comparison with your LED. So um, you'll find that like if you have a 150 watt um, uh, incandescent bulb that you're going to replace with a, a um, LED, on the LED it'll say it's between 25 and 28 uh, watts. Well that will convert to 20, uh, uh, 2600 lumens. So it's kind of interesting to, uh, to keep that in mind. Um, so today we're going to um, talk about the different product brands that I mentioned earlier. And uh, such as the um, Philips Hue White and Color Ambience, the Singlet Color Changing Light Bulbs, C by GE Full Color Direct Connect Smart LED Bulbs, E Light LED Bulbs, YZ Bulbs, Nano Leaf Canvas, and Peace by Hamilton. Now, to begin with, the best. Um, a bulb that works with a hub, but also the most expensive are the Philips Hue White and Color Ambience. So they have a maximum brightness of 800 lumens and a color temperature between 2000 and 65K, which would be a wattage equivalent of a 60 watt bulb. Uh, their low uh, power consumption 
Uh, they, the connectivity is Bluetooth and Zigbee. They're, they're compatible with your HomeKit, Alexa, Google Assistant, IFTTT. They have a lifespan of 25,000 hours. And Hue is, Philips Hue is probably the best known name in the smart lighting because it got in the game early and today has an, express, an impressive lineup of bulbs and fittings to choose from. So when you're ready to go beyond the standard bulbs, there are some interesting fixtures and accessories such as the Hue dimmer switch or the Hue lighting strips. They offer a large gamut of features such as color control, scheduling, integration with third-party apps. It's platform agnostic, working with the Apple HomeKit, Alexa, Google Assistant, IFTT, and more. But you want to add a hue bridge for the full effect. And this will give you the latest lights um, uh, features and uh, it's a great way to, uh, to get started. Um, but if you want to just use the lights in Bluetooth mode, uh, that's one way to get started. Uh, but you're going to have a limited um, feature, uh, limited features to choose from. But the one to start with, which is the, probably the least uh, Ex, uh, expensive, and I think the uh, it's the white um, and color amorous bulb, uh, which will give you all kinds of uh, different effects. Uh, they range about um, forty five dollars. Now the next bulb that we um, want to look at is the singlet color changing bulb. And it's probably the best for, uh, uh, for on your budget. Now, the, what's behind it is its maximum brightness is going to be 800 lumens. It's going to have a color temperature of 2700 to 6500K. And its wattage is also equal to a 60 watt bulb. Uh, it's low um, uh, power, 9 watts. Uh, and its connectivity is also with Zigbee and Wi-Fi, and it's compatible with Alexa, Google Assistant, and IFTTT. And it has a lifespan of 25,000 hours. The advantage of uh, the singlet bulbs is that it's a more wallet-friendly and uh, it does require a hub although it's now offered in white daylight and other color bulbs and Wi-Fi versions that talk directly to your router. Because the hub, the one thing that's, that uh, you have with the hub is that it's the ones that will allow you to control the bulb to its fullest capacity, where the app has some limitations. So if you can, um, uh, some like the Philips Hue bulb will come with a hub, or you can, it's a hub, it's an optional, that's, that's part of its ecosystem. Where the singlet, you're gonna to have to use something like a wink or some other type of hub to connect to it. Now there are some bulbs that really don't require hub and that are it's, it's the GE ones. And the one I'm familiar with is C by GE. And uh, it's available with uh, usually bundled with your Google Mini um, uh, speakers. So it has a maximum brightness of 800 lumens. The wattage equivalent is a 60 watt bulb. It's low powered, it's nine watts, and its connectivity is Bluetooth uh, and Wi Fi. And makes it compatible with Alexa and Google Assistant. And it has a lifespan of 13.7 years. Um, they are, can be a bit pricey, 
but they can save you a chunk of money if you're looking to set up just a few bubs. Uh, that's because these bubs can connect directly to your Wi-Fi network without the need of any additional uh, like hubs. And if your Wi-Fi ever misbehaves, they all support a Bluetooth uh, connection that you can use as a backup. They also offer a complete smart lighting experience and you can get an option to set the bulbs to a full range of colors or go with a tunable white that can be ranged from warm to um, a cool color temperature. And you can set the bulbs to run on a schedule, make custom scenes and even control them with your, uh, with your uh, Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. And they're a great option if you're just starting to dab, dabble in smart home devices and home automation if you have a smaller living space. But if you're planning to go big, then a hub-based solution may prove cheaper in the long run. The next one is a Yeelight. I'm not familiar with these, but they are cheap and they offer a lot of uh, functionality. Uh, they have a maximum brightness of 800 lumens. The color temperature uh, is between 1700 and 6500K. Uh, their wattage equivalent is a 60 watt. And uh, their wattage is 8.5. They will connect through Wi-Fi and they're compatible with Apple HomeKit, Alexa, Google Assistant, IFTTT. And their lifespan is 2,500 hours, 25,000 hours. And um, they have a smart color LED bulb that almost sounds too good to be true. No hub, low price, good color temperature range. And they integrate with uh, the current um, uh, speakers. And yet it delivers with a fantastic smart bulb that should have Hue uh, and other brands watching their backs. And like most bulbs, it has scheduling and timers. And what that really means, we mentioned that before, is that when we're talking about scheduling and timers, that means you can set up a routine for your house, for your lights to come and um, go off at a certain time. It's just like having a uh, mechanical timer attached to those. You can have it uh, set to, uh, for the lights to go down at, uh, uh, dust come on at dusk and then come and then go off at dawn uh, or any time in between so that really makes them uh, uh, smart bulbs really um, uh, versatile and also the other thing that's really neat about them is the fact is that they really have a long life uh, span and you're talking about as, as I said earlier most of these bulbs we talked about has at least 25,000 hours and um, they really put out a lot of light, even um, when uh, under, they work under a low wattage. So the, another company that's coming up is YZ. Uh, it was a, uh, by the way, you can go on the websites and, and for these different brands and see what's what's available. But YC is a company that makes a broad range of products. Uh, one of those is which is above. Uh, and again, their brightness is equivalent to a, a 60 watt bulb. Um, and we're talking about incandescent bulb. They're low wattage, 9.5 watts. And they connect through uh, Wi-Fi. And they're also compatible with the Alexa Google Assistant and IFTT. Their lifespan is 20,000 hours, but uh, they have a very low entry point. Uh, it's their lights uh, does exactly that. And it's $8 above or $30 for four. And that's really a, an inexpensive uh, price to pay for smart bulbs. But despite the cost and the fraction of the price of some of its rivals, if you are um, Wi-Fi, it offers all the basic features that you expect, and it doesn't require a hub to get going. 
This means the app control for adjusting temperature, uh, setting schedules and turning your bulbs on and off when you're out of the house. Um, and they also will integrate with Alexa and Google Assistant. Right now, they only offer one white bulb. There's no color options. And then the, um, the Nano Leaf uh, canvas is best for decorating your home. Um, it has uh, lumens of 800 lumens. Uh, it's equivalent to a 40 watt bulb. Uh, the wattage is one watt and it connects uh, with Wi-Fi and all the things we've mentioned earlier, Apple, HomeKit, Alexa, Google Assistant, so forth. It has a 25,000 hour lifespan. Nanoleaf like, uh, isn't like other brands on the list. Instead of bulbs, it makes light panels of different shapes for you to combine in interesting formations. Where sunlights are meant to blend into the background, the nano leaves are made to be seen. Uh, you have a choice of triangle and square panels. There uh, are hexagon, uh, there's also going to be a hexagon version available in the spring. You'll need a starter pack to get things uh, kicked off. But um, adding expansion sets until you really realize all your geomantic fantasies. So it'd be really neat to just have a back panel, maybe uh, uh, in a, uh, on a sidewall or something where you have these aluminum panels and it just gives a soft glow. I could think of the hallway would be, probably be a really neat place to have those. And if you want, uh, to, if you need lots of bubs, then um, Peace by Hamilton is our last um, suggestion. And, um, they have an equivalent of 60 watts and uh, they work with uh, Wi-Fi, um, Alexa, Google Assistant. Again, the lifespan is 25,000 hours and uh, you can get a pack of four bubs for $60. They, you ex uh, easily outfit a whole room with smart bubs or you can get several packs um, to tackle the whole house. Uh, you won't be adding just any old bulb to your house, but these pick, uh, with these picks either. So what happens is that you have uh, controllability uh, uh, over Wi-Fi, and you will be able to uh, remote control them by your cell phone, and uh, they will support all the other um, forms of voice recognition, such as Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Uh, they have a wide range of color temperatures, letting you dial in the lighting for calm, evening hues, or energetic daylight. They also um, uh, have a full range of colors that you can get uh, even more elaborate with your home color schemes. So, when you're going to be picking a bub, you're going to uh, go with what depends on a couple factors. One is budget. And say, for instance, you want a, a cheap option. You only need a few bubs. There's a product out called the TP-Link uh, LB100. It's a $20 Wi-Fi bub that collects directly to your router. So it doesn't require a hub or offer plug and play simplicity. And if you just want the cheapest option, you need a bunch of bulbs. Uh, if you need a lot of light, then it makes sense to tie them all to a dedicated lighting platform that won't interfere with your Wi-Fi network. So by far, Hue is the best way to do that. Uh, and you can uh, get its white only bulbs are the cheapest uh, way in. You still have, have, you can have all your houses with just regular um, white bulbs, which will be denim, and uh, probably be able to adjust uh, the um, the brightness of the bulb uh, as well. But that would be the cheapest way to do. And then, if you want something that's really uh, uh, fancy, 
you can go out and get um, what they refer to as a haiku light. And it's a, actually a fixture. And it's made by, excuse the expression, this fan company that calls itself uh, Big Ass Solutions. And because they have large, really huge fans, but they make this uh, classy recess light fixture, uh, as you see in this picture, uh, that uh, is really neat, but it's also very expensive. And if you want to go for uh, extra features, say you want a uh, bug that's going to depend on a uh, uh, you want to have something that I control with Siri. Uh, well, the uh, Philips Hue Bub would be the way to go. And uh, it's practice the only ch uh, choice that works with both Alexa and Siri. So what about the do-it-yourself option? Well, as we showed, you can pay a ludicrously inflated prices for lights that barely give off a nose amount of light. Or you can go with the uh, do-it-yourself route, making something far brighter for a fractional cost. For about 20 bucks, you can buy a five meter strip of RGB LEDs directly from China that includes a controller and power supply. Uh, five meters or more are more than enough to, uh, for most mood lighting projects. A standard RGB controller works with an infrared, just like the one on your TV. So any programmable universal remote, such as the Harmony Ultimate Remote, can be customized to control your lights. And then the Wink Hub Combos is a really... Uh, good alternative and i looked these up um in, in the picture you see you get two bulbs plus the hub and you can uh this is a great start and you can buy inexpensive bulbs from ge in sylvania and they will work um this set here uh, which will include the power and internet cables plus uh the wink hub 2 two sylvania smart a19 dental bulbs and it's $130 online. So once you get the hub, then it's just a matter of getting it programmed and then adding the lights as you go along. And so the initial expense is gonna be high, but uh, as you go and replace the uh, bulbs, uh, you'll find that uh, the cost will be uh, a lot less because first of all, they're LED bulbs, so they're not gonna last they're gonna last a very long time. You won't be replacing as often as you do the old standard uh, incandescent bulbs. So um, back to our, our home hub. Remember, it's a device that's gonna connect uh, different best home automation systems into one system. And what you wanna be looking for in a smart hub is compatibility. There are different standards for communicating with smart home devices with, that we talked about ZB and Z-Wave. So before purchasing a uh, home hub, ensure that it supports the standards used for by your existing smart home devices. It's sort of like going out and buying your own router. Um, it's gonna be a, a standalone device that you're gonna be using to control all your home automation uh, devices from your uh, thermostats, your uh, cameras, and your lights. And they'll all be running through uh, your hub and they'll be running on probably one of one or uh, or two of these protocols that we have mentioned here, in addition to Bluetooth and some of the others. But the hub will be able to support all of that, uh, those different activities. It's a way of integrating all your uh, devices so that you just only have to deal with one application. So our next. Uh, 
product that we want to talk about is uh, internet video doorbells. Uh, they're increasingly becoming uh, really popular, mainly because you're looking at uh, the Ring doorbell commercials. Um, and they show you some of the advantages of having an internet doorbell. So it's really a popular option for uh, uh, your do-it-yourself uh, automation enthusiasts. So many video doorbells come equipped with an option to connect it to your existing doorbell system or simply operate on its on a battery power. Uh, I found that uh, it was a really easy uh, installation. I have a Skybell, which is a which was an early um, product. It was out before the Ring doorbell, but um, my home has a wired doorbell system. So for me, it was just a matter of removing the old doorbell and then connecting the, the, the two the existing wires to the new doorbell and then getting it um, uh, connected to my Wi-Fi. Now the thing about uh, the doorbells is that if it's a wired doorbell, that means it has a, a manual chime that's located in another part of your house, a striker. Uh, and um, so you need to know the difference between that and electronic. If you have an electronic doorbell, that means that you have uh, some sort of means of that button on the outside of the house to, commit, to communicate with the uh, indoor system and the your indoor system will have some sort of a speaker device that you see rather than having a, a manual um, striker so that's something you really need to uh, take a look at and some of these doorbells the ring particularly comes battery operated so that you don't really uh, need to um, bother with the wires if you don't want to you just replace it with the battery version and uh, then put the um, pang and speaker someplace uh, in your home but uh, determining what type of any uh, doorbell uh, works best for you there's a number of things that you want to consider one is installation difficulty you want to consider the design and when i say that is that if your current doorbell is uh, narrow and you have a narrow facing to put it on, then you don't want to buy one that is too um, large to fit in that space. And then you also might want to take a look at one that's going to be integrated into your existing home security system. So um, video doorbells um, and home automation has improved significantly over the last couple of years by adding streaming components. And some models to choose from is the Skybell HD, which um, is the one that I, I own. And whether a day or night, you can clearly see who's at your door with the Skybell HD. You can use it, as, um, use it smartphones integrated app to start a live feed anytime you wish, or just rely on the sensitive motion detector system to alert you when someone's approaching and it also works with um, uh, Alexa. I know um, I get a little uh, uh, alert uh, when someone is at the door, even before they ring the doorbell. And then I can also communicate with them because there's a little uh, speaker on the uh, app. I just uh, press that and I can ask who's at the door or whatever I want to say. And uh, from a security aspect that's a really a nice feature you can also just uh, scan the area without um, having anyone it, it will act as a video camera for the area that uh, for the, your uh, porch area and of course the ring is the one that uh, is, gets is been getting lots of advertising and um, it gets um, uh, hardwired uh, you can uh, get it hardwired to your existing doorbell wiring so you don't have to worry about complicated installation of batteries dying when you have someone at the door it takes clear 1080p hd video pictures 
It features an infrared uh, to identify nighttime visitors. And of course, there are uh, battery models that you can use. Another one that you may not hear about a lot is um, August. Uh, it's a doorbell that cannot connect with uh, Apple devices, uh, at least the home kit. But um, I'm sorry, it's the one that can connect with the uh, Apple home kit and can easily be integrated with the August companion door locks. It offers video monitoring features, infrared, and identifies nighttime visitors. Uh, this is a perfect pairing if you have the August smart door lock. Uh, uh, which will segue right into door locks. Now, in an or, uh, internet door locks, the, the, uh, what's common to all of them is that you can control and manage with smartphone and web applications. Uh, the same considerations that you use for choosing your uh, uh, video cameras would also apply to door locks. Uh, there are some quirks and perks that we need to talk about. One is the operating range and the difficulty in installation and how well they integrate with your other devices. So some lo um, door locks require you replace the entire lock system, while others will let you place a smart device over your existing dead boat. And so you might need to, um, to take a look at that when you, uh, that, that's a nice option, is that it just replace, rather than re replacing the existing lock, it just fits over it, and then the mechanicals uh, interact with the existing uh, mechanism. So some of the products that you can look at are, is the August lock, and it's a, the most elegant one. It's uh, on the um, video here, it's the round one that's at the near the bottom of the, the screen. The, it's the uh, gray one that's um, it's a circular uh, and it will replace your old deadlock, um, a dead boat, and you'll be able to control and manage it from uh, your um, Apple device, your Android or web app. And they no will notify you when certain people come in and out of your house and let you give unlimited digital keys to friends and family with a specific hours of operation and how long they have access. The lock uses Bluetooth and recognizes, um, uh, uses your phones as a digital uh, key. It's no need to bring the phone out it just uh, when it becomes in proximity, it knows that uh, it recognizes it. Kivo is another brand, um, um, and it's a replacement that requires a full install. Uh, they have interfaces that will work with Nest and the Honeywell thermostats, Ring, and Skybell video doorbells. Um, and even Android Wear, which is the watch. And there are two accessories available that allow you to control the locks anywhere in the world. And a FOM that, uh, that you can use if you don't have a smartphone. And then there's the uh, uh, Nest Yale lock. And it's uh, more secure, uh, uses the uh, secure Nest Home. And uh, Yale has had a 177 years of experience in making the world's strongest locks. Uh, and they've teamed up with Nest uh, to uh, have um, a, a lock that's secure, convenient, and connected. And now works with Google Assistant to lock your doors and report status. So you, um, it also integrates with the, um, with other Nest products such as the cameras as well. 
So that's something to look at. And when I was looking at the website for Yale, they had several different versions of Yale locks. Uh, and the one that I uh, focused on was the, uh, the uh, Yale uh, Nest version. And then there's uh, Slodge, uh, which has a, a Wi-Fi dead boat. And this one will connect directly to your Wi-Fi and also gives you the ability to um, control uh, your lock anywhere. Um, it also has um, voice applications. So there's some of the offerings there for, um, for locks. And there's security cameras, which I, uh, most people are really interested in. And the thing about them, a smart webcam is probably the most desired piece of hardware for your home automation. It can be placed anywhere to monitor the activities around your house. Um, the ability to save events and videos to an internal uh, micro SD card, or some of them have cloud services and you have remote monitoring anytime from anywhere in the world. And there are models for both inside and outside use. So there is uh, always a question of whether you want to do it yourself or have the pro install. Uh, when you do it yourself, uh, uh, Simply Safe comes to mind. You don't require wiring into your electrical system, which is a big part, which makes the installation easy. It also means that if you move, you can take that system with you easily. But some of the other models to, uh, to consider are Netgear. Uh, Nest Cam, Belkin, and NetCam. And these are also fairly portable, but uh, some of them require wiring that, um, that you have to string wire from um, one point to the other in order to get um, uh, the best usage out of them. Thermostats. A smart thermostat is the newest way to um, control your temperature in your house uh, using a smartphone or tablet. The Google Nest is uh, the one that by far is, um, has the most capabilities in, in my opinion. And uh, it's probably 95% compatible with most of uh, heating and air systems. But there are instances that uh, there are some compatibility problems. So that's something you have to look at when you're, um, when you're actually getting um, to buy one of these. And uh, the best way to find out is to go on to the website for the model that you're particularly looking for. And they will have uh, some installation instructions and some of them have a little survey that you go through and ask questions about what type of um, heating and air system you have, what are the wires that are required to make it run. So that may require that you have to take the cover off your existing thermostat and see what wires that you have connected. And then uh, those wires need to be compared with the ones for the one that you're going to purchase. But we also have some other ones here. Uh, the the Ecobee, which is one that is another popular one. I know here in Oklahoma City, uh, our uh, uh, gas company is uh, offering those as part of their smart um, home system as a free of charge. In other words, they're using that to uh, uh, as an energy. Um, a product that they offer to their customers. But the, the one that is being um, given to the customers are the exact same one that you can buy in the store. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, there's the Sensel um, uh, Emerson thermostat, which I hadn't uh, really uh, didn't know about, but it has the same uh, capabilities, seven days um, flexible scheduling for energy use. It has a mobile app and it works with um, the heating and air equipment uh, found in most homes. 
and it's also comparable with uh, 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 Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant for voice control. So it has a lot of, um, uh, it's the easiest supposedly and quickest one to install on the market. And it doesn't require a C wire, if that means anything to anyone. That's one of the wires that you would find inside of your thermostat, um, which um, you'd have to connect for uh, in certain instances. Uh, there was another brand that was mentioned that was called Hive. Um, and, um, and then there was the Lux Geo. So these are some of the ones that you can uh, look at. And again, budget is what you want to look at and features. And then there's the X10 alternative. Um, X10 is something I've mentioned before. It's one of the oldest um, home automation um, products on the market, but it has so, sort of updated its um, um, products to work with um, uh, mobile devices. And uh, so this is one that's uh, I will allow you to um, turn on uh, ceiling fans and open and close dampers and, and also adjust um, the um, temperature. Um, and um, the one thing that's about the X10 products is that they've, um, they're tried and true and they've been on the uh, market for a long time and they're relatively inexpensive. So we're talking about our smart home uh, projects. Here's some final thoughts. If you wanna create a, um, uh, the question is, has enough progress in home automation technology occurred to make it worth your while to smarten up your home so that you can age in place? If you like the idea of being able to control your security system from afar and cut your energy costs, then you want to take a look of what's available. You want to create a smart home that will perfectly suit your needs and budget. Uh, you need to plan and plan thoroughly. You want to decide on the integration, decide what devices work well together. Uh, and also ask your question, what would you rather do? Clap your hands to turn your lights on or ask Mr. Google or Miss Alexa to turn your lights off. So we're getting pretty uh, close to getting that Jetson home that I remember watching the cartoon series of uh, being able to uh, use our voice to control a lot of things, have a device in our pocket that we can control the opening and closing of our uh, doors and locks. So there's just a lot of possibilities and it's all to do with your own imagination. So we have some more workshops coming up. Um, the last of the home automation ones will be part four, as I mentioned earlier, December 9th. And we're talking about doing it yourself or having it done and we will, um, kind of uh, draw on some of the comments that we hear today to, to, um, to formulate that uh, workshop. So if you still need to uh, uh, register, then, uh, well, if you're here, you don't need to register, but if you have friends that want to uh, participate or see this last one, uh, that's the contact information. Uh, along with that, there's gonna be Linux workshops with Orf Beach and he uh, is the Linux Expo scale guru, along with um, John Kennedy, our APC advisor, and Sharon uh, Kawani. He's with the Southeastern Michigan Computer uh, Organization. Uh, part one has already taken place, but part two will be November 18th, getting and installing Linux. Part three, December 2nd, distros and desktops. Part four, 
December 16th, software applications and package management. Again, the contact person is Judy Tallur. And that completes our discussion for home automation as far as cameras, lights, and videos, products. So now we're open for any questions or clarifications uh, in the discussion that we just had. So I will now ask uh, John to uh, open it up for questions. I'll check with Judy first to see if, if she has uh, questions that came across her chat. I've got a couple, but I'll see if she has some first. Go ahead and ask yours and then let's open it up to the floor. Okay. Uh, the chart that you showed earlier with the bulb base uh, are in millimeters. Is there a base chart that converts it to English? And the same thing, the bulb temperatures are in Kelvin. Can you get a chart that converts to what we understand better? That's a good question, but I don't know if someone else will have to, let me share my video. Someone else will have, I didn't see one. I mean, I think um, all those measurements uh, currently today are in those uh, values. They're Kelvins and uh, millimeters. I had another question for your uh, answering. Sounds like X10 is not a smartphone controlled device. Originally it was not. Uh, they have adapters that they have come out with that allows uh, you to be able to control that. One that I showed you that at the end was one that uh, is an adapter which will allow you to use your smartphone and uh, uh, to control it. They're gradually <laughs> moving into a more uh, into the uh, into that area now. But originally, they had some of their stuff was just strictly proprietary, but uh, that you had to have their controllers. But now they're uh, having devices that will uh, or adapters that will allow you to uh, make that happen. Okay, uh, here's how things will work well with a huge number of people that we have. Uh, you're welcome to turn your cameras back on if you want us to be able to see each other. And I'm gonna check the box to allow you to unmute. Uh, on your taskbar for your Zoom, you have a button that's, or, or it's in your um, uh, thumbnail that you can raise your hand. And what we've decided after a couple of these sessions is with so many screens, we would have to be flipping back to find somebody who's got their hand raised up, is that if you go and check the box that says, raise your hand, we easily see it on the participants list. And then we are able to see who needs a question without having to try to find you. And so we're gonna do that way. Uh, we'll also take questions in the chat box if you, you know, don't want it. So I, I'm going to and, check. And John, I noticed yep. I have some, uh, some comments in my chat box. Oh, I, I have two questions. Go ahead. Um, Dorothy, our friend from Victoria said, does the August lock have a uh, battery level indicator? No, but the lady keeps telling you your battery is low. Uh, because I have one of those and she repeatedly said your battery's low and you know the next day she would tell me your battery is low and of course Wa didn't pay any attention to it and uh, I got in via my key Dorothy said her friend could her key did not work and it was extremely easy to replace the batteries like I should have done in the first place the lady said Yo, Judy, you know, your battery's low. So you need to keep, you know, pay attention to the verbal cues. And JJ would like you to uh, explain I-T-T-T. -T -T. Okay. I-T-T-T. -T -T. That's a good question. 
uh, it means if this, then that. So oh. anyways, it sets up a question where uh, if your um, device that you currently own is not compatible, then you can use this as a workaround. So you tell the IFT, because the, the, uh, all the devices supposedly will understand IFTTT. So if you tell it, if this occurs, then do this. It's just a way of communicating a um, request from a non-compatible device to make it compatible, if that makes any sense. So uh, for instance, um, I'm trying to think, uh, hold on a second. I have a good, I think I have a good, I can find it quickly. if the front door opens then the living room lights turn on and the music starts to play that would be a good example but to make that happen uh, um, some devices are incapable of following those commands on their own so the uh, the example that you uh, stated would be a means of allowing that to happen in other words there's nothing that you can uh, uh, that you have that when you open the door, that's going to automatically tell your light bulbs, to, your lights to come on, unless you have something like a motion uh, 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 detector. But in this instance, the trigger would be uh, your lock, which is an automated device. It knows that that lock has been activated, which will then trigger your smart lights to come on because it's got a signal that's saying, oh, that door opened, so that means I need to turn the lights on. I have another question regarding to the lock. Uh, it's what is the life of the batteries? Well, when you buy something with batteries in it, we all know that they kind of go almost semi-instantly. And I checked with my... Um, oldest daughter's husband and I said hey you know how long did your original batteries last he said not long so I put you know good batteries in there and these are going to last a lot longer but I have no clue how long they're going to and I think if I ever did it again I would probably automatically replace the batteries as soon as we installed the lock sort of like ink that comes with your printer when you buy one Got it. Absolutely. Good. Hey, we've got some people have found that little button for uh, asking questions. So we'll start with the list. First come, first serve. Gabe. Gabe Goldberg. Hi. Your turn. Uh, Bill, thanks. Thanks for the great presentation. I have a general question and a specific question. General question is security. Um, obviously, all of these new gadgets, new devices potentially introduce security exposures to your home network. And if they're controlling your lock or your thermostat, they can be more exciting than you want them to be. That's a general question, just tips on how to tell which systems, infrastructures, ecosystems, devices are more secure than others. And the other question is, a, is specific for me. Uh, we really don't have any home automation. We've got a bunch of handheld remotes that turn on and off different outlets, and they're convenient as far as they go, but they don't go very far. Uh, we have four Apple devices. We have two iPads and two iPhones. And I've been looking at the new iPod mini, the $99 smart speaker that you can yell at and tell it to do various things. So my question is, given that we've already got four devices that will answer to, hey, S-I-R-I, I don't want to say it because I've got several in the room where I am. I'll say uh, it. I'll say it. <laughs> no, don't do that. Wake up half the people on the call's devices. Um, the question is, do I really need a HomePod rather than just talking to the devices that I've already got? 
and it sounded as though you thought the Apple ecosystem was a little more limited than, than some of the others. Um, at the same time, there's appeal to being able to use the devices that we've got, or if we get the HomePod, integrate those with the devices that we've already got, rather than starting something from scratch. Well, the HomePod, and I didn't realize they had one for $99. That's, that's, it. that's uh, exciting. That's probably one of Apple's new offerings. What it will do, it will tie those, those four devices together that um, you can be able to uh, be at any place. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have carried the device with you. You don't have to necessarily have your phone with you. You can just yell the uh, uh, question or query to that uh, speaker. So that would be the one advantage I would think of having it. that take care of Gabe's questions? Well, what, 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 where, where does the Apple ecosystem stand compared to some of the others? The question is whether well, of the it, other ones it has enough going um, forward potential to, to be worthwhile doing. Uh, to be more um, open, I would go with a Google uh, Mini myself because it will um, interface with some of the Apple devices. The Apple device, though, will not interface with the Android or, um, uh, devices at all. That, that's the issue, is that you're, and some of the other um, applications are uh, rather limited as far as having uh, control by Apple, by other, if, <clears throat> other than Apple devices. Uh, Apple is, is so proprietary, and, well, it's not proprietary, it is proprietary, but Apple doesn't really allow a lot of uh, third-party integration. They want to control everything, and so it makes it very difficult for a manufacturer to uh, break into that uh, area without jumping through hoops in order to meet uh, Apple's um, stringent requirements. That's my only comment. I mean, I don't, I, I, I have an iPad that I use and uh, I can do certain things with it. But as far as um, the iPad is much better than setting up some of the devices and actually controlling them. That's what I found. What? Are you an Android or an iPhone person? Me or Gabe? I'm, I know I'm asking Dwight. JJ. Oh, it wasn't JJ's. Hey, I, I'm, I'm an uh, Apple person. I have Apple iPad, uh, Apple uh, phone. I think I have an Android somewhere in the dust pile, whatever, for oh. Android, but other than that, no, no, I'm mostly Apple and PC. I just thought he might be able to answer Gabe's question. No. No, it's, uh, it's really what you can, but Gabe, what you can do if you get a uh, Google Mini, you can bridge a lot of those issues. Well, that's, that's interesting. I actually have a Google Mini that I won in a user group raffle. And so I've got it set up and all I do is yell at it to play different news stations that I listen to, but I've not taught it to do any other tricks. So I've sort of got <laughs> one toe in the Google ecosystem and four toes for the four Apple devices in the what's Apple. The four, what's the four Apple devices that you're trying to control? Well, it's not that I'm trying to control. We've got the two iP iP iPads and the two iPhones, and it just seems- But you can, you can install the Google Assistant on those iPhones and your uh, iPad. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, obviously more research to do. Yeah, you can install the Google Assistant on your iPhones and iPads and uh, it'll work just fine. You can still use those phones to control all those other devices. You don't have to change those, except that you'll be using the mini. But you do have your, to do your research because uh, I said that to somebody and then when I looked it up during another home automation workshop we had and, oh, the device. We lost you. It Lost first started out with a workaround and it got down to the bottom and said it really doesn't work. Yeah, well, I know the uh, reason why I say that I can vouch for experience because I have the Google Assistant uh, installed on my iPad and I can control all those devices. 
Good. Uh, Bill, I have a question. Now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to Stephanie. What about uh, Richard? John needs think... to raise his hand. John has a list of people who've raised their oh, hands. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I, okay. I can't find the uh, where you raise your hand. Then ask a question. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Steph. I, okay. I wake up in. I wake up in the middle of the night and need to go to the bathroom, and the light for the hallway is uh, middle of the hallway instead of on my I end. Of the room. Too. No, I don't need to. <laughs> There, there. I heard a question, and I can answer well, that. Can I, I, can you can it. Hey, a time out. Time out. This, John, can you explain one more time how people raise their hands? And then John actually is going to start at the top of the list, which is the first person who raised their hand digitally, digitally, and go down the list. Because we have three screens. And we can only see one screen at a time. And if people don't have videos, we can't see a hand on there. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to your participants list, there's a raise your hand. There might be one that's on your taskbar, but because I'm the host, I don't have that. And then you can raise the hand. And that way we see a list of that. So, um, Stephanie, go ahead and continue. We're talking about uh, a hallway light that's in the far way end of the hall, right? It, it's halfway down the hall. And I would like to turn it on without having to turn on a cell phone uh, to find it because I'm in a hurry to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> so is there some other device that would uh, work? Yeah. Uh, get your Google uh, Mini and a smart bulb and your, have your solution. So all you would do from your bedside is say, turn the hallway light on. Okay, thank you. Now it's uh, the, uh, um, those many devices cost probably anyway from 30 to $40. Black Friday's coming up, so you might look for sales. And uh, I mentioned the uh, GEC bub, those are bundled together. And you can just buy uh, that and then plug, uh, screw the light bulb into that fixture and then have the uh, Google Mini any place in your bedroom, doesn't matter where. Uh, and you just tell it to, uh, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say, hey Google, turn off the kitchen lights. Okay, turning off six lights. That's all you need to do. Hey Google, turn on the kitchen lights. Sorry, it looks like that device hasn't been set up yet. You can do that in assistant settings. I triggered someone else's Google. You knew yeah. that would happen. Thank you. Google is a company dedicated to organizing. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, who's yeah. next? Ed Edward Kenny, our good guy. Go ahead, Edward, unmute. Hello, okay, if you have a, a door with more than one lock, how do you handle that? Have a what? More than one lock, door. Front door, back door, side door. Front door? Yeah. Two locks? Oh, two. How about if, how two about if you ask that question slower? Okay, uh, if your front door has two locks, like, like a deadbolt and an knob lock, how do you handle that with a smart lock? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, you, don't, you only have to, re, you're going to have to replace the dead boat and then the other lock uh, you wouldn't use. You have to make sure somebody doesn't, uh, uh, you might have to remove it because somebody's going to lock it manually there and you won't be able to unlock it then. With the... Yeah, you're, uh, you may, you're probably going to have to re replace the um, uh, both uh, replace the dead boat with the smart lock and then the other lock, uh, the other uh, lock here and it has to dis disable. Okay, another question. Uh, uh, is there any way to mix smart and unsmart lights? Sure. I have smart and unsmart lights. I have uh, 
like the lights here in the kitchen I just replaced, but uh, there are other lights in the house that are not smart. You, you, I mean, you, if you have, have like, like well, you tell you have a fix light. Go ahead. If you have a fixture with four lights in it, you have to put four smart lights in it. If you could put smart lights in it. No, you can just have t uh, one light in it, and yes, that bulb is going to come on. Okay. You leave the light. Well, you don't want to do that because the light switch has to be turned on for it to work. So uh, if you have the light switch and those other bulbs that are in, they're going to always be on. Okay. So um, it's best to uh, replace them all or take the bulbs out of those fixtures. Okay, that's all I have. Good. Yeah, go on to Pierre. Yes, hi. Um, more comments than a question. On IFTTT, uh, let me give you a different example that may resonate more with the audience, one that I'm using. Uh, you can set your smartphone to uh, detect its location. And when the smartphone moves outside of a circle that you define centered around your house, for example, uh, it could automatically turn on or turn off a uh, surveillance camera. Uh, that's what I'm using when I leave my house and I'm away more than the radius of that circle, it will turn on the camera. When I re-enter that circle, it turns off the camera. Right. So that's one example. Um, in terms of, it, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Jay. I said referred to as geofencing. Correct, correct. Uh, in terms of security of those devices, uh, I think it's the responsibility of whoever is installing it to make sure that the Wi-Fi password that you're using for your Wi-Fi is a very strong password. Make sure that you're using the latest Wi-Fi capability on your router, mainly WPA2, and if you have a more recent router, use WPA3. Uh, so that's a, a, another thing. Um, finally, in terms of um, the, the lady was asking about turning the light uh, at night to, to go to the bathroom. Uh, I'm surprised that nobody mentioned uh, a motion detector that uh, a light ca a coupled with a motion detector that could automatically turn on when motion is detected. Uh, that would be even easier uh, than uh, trying to tell your smart speaker to, to do it for you. And I would agree with that, but the only difference being is that uh, the light would not come on until she actually got the bed to reach the door. Where it, all, it all depends when the motion, where the motion detector is located, but I just wanted to mention that yeah. possibility. Uh, but... Uh, but those are good points, particularly, I, I, I failed to mention that about the, the router, and I think we talked about that in our last uh, installment about having uh, an up-to-date router and having strong passwords. Bill, would you do me a favor and unplug your uh, mic system and plug it back in again, because you're crackling and popping and carrying on. For me? Yeah, you. I don't know that that'll work, but I think that's that's I, that's a thought. That's a I thought. think I'm moving my uh, the mic was hitting my uh, my shirt. Uh, you, you're just pop, the, pop, popping. I have the you, you're still crackling. You're still crackling. Oh, I am. Yeah, actually, unplug it. Although Grammarly would tell me not to use the word actually. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk to us. Is hey. Is that better? For now. Oh, yes. Yes. The old, re yeah. the old reboot. Yeah. Um, okay, John. Yeah. Uh, Carl Kalenda, you have a question. Unmute yourself. I was going to uh, comment on the... Uh, 
some of these uh, solutions are overkill. And like the one with the motion detector in the hall, I have a, a night light that uh, in my hallways that come on, they're very low, you know, um, current and they just come on with day and night light. So I, my hallways are always lit up. Okay. Yeah, I think the, what I got from her, where her question is, is that she wants to be able to get out of bed and have the light already on so she can see her path. I don't think she wants to get out of bed and walk to the door and then have the light come on. Well, well, that's my point. Uh, the night lights come on automatically with, you know, darkness and daylight, they go off. I, I have them all over my house. I, you know, they're very low level light and uh, I don't need, I, I have a path even, and especially in my bathroom. I have a light in my bathroom too, these night lights. They just plug in the wall and, and they show the pathway as a minimum. It's, it depends on, you know, how techy you want to get, I guess. Thank you. Uh, Sherry, unmute and share with us. Uh, yes, Sherry's husband, oh, Fred. I'm sorry. Oh, well, see, you didn't change your name on there. <laughs> okay, no. go ahead. Uh, yeah, what it is, is I just um, recently got a, an Echo Show second generation, and it came with a hub which is a, I'm just looking it up now, Zigbee, or at any rate. Um, and is, if I understand it correctly, if I install a bulb that says it's A-L-E-X-A uh, adaptable, uh, is that all I need to do? All you need to do. So you're, I install uh, a bulb, excuse me, go ahead. You're, you're, um, the, it's the compatibility. So that device is capable of uh, interfacing with uh, any bulb probably on the market because I think they almost all have Zigbee or uh, Z-Wave included in it. So you don't have anything to worry about. So when I screw it's, that bulb into the socket, that's all I need to do? Well, it depends on the, you have to download the app. Z Zigbee or, or but, uh, Well, no, that's wrong. I'm sorry because uh, the, uh, the show will have, uh, the Google is uh, uh, home already in the, in the um, that's the app that you use to interface all the rest of those devices. Oh, the A-L-E-X-A -E app. Yes. And I just add that. When you plug, when you, when you um, install the bub, you know, do the search and it'll, it'll find the bub and then you'll be able to control it. Just like, well, I, like I have Wi-Fi plugs, the same thing, just to find it and, right. okay, super. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. No problem. Judy Talor with a question. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jimmy has 15 GEC bulbs, a lot more than I have. And when only he had a few of them, it worked flawlessly. Now that he has so many, they lose their connection to his router. Uh, and he has to reset them, and that is painful. Uh, do you know if the GEC bulbs can be hooked up to a hub? They can. So uh, what I would suggest you do is get um, the, um, what would I say, the one, I forgot, my memory is losing. Um, we talked about, Get, get a wink hub and they, you should be able to connect all of them with no problems. W-I-N-K and you can uh, go to their website uh, and uh, get the particulars. I'm thinking it might be, um, uh, you should be able to find them at Best Buy too. But that would solve your problem. 
And if you have time, wait till Black Friday and they might really be on sale. Yeah, I think the, what's happening now is, remember I said don't overload your um, your network with, uh, with bubs? And so it's taking a toll on your Wi-Fi. And that's the reason why you're getting uh, uh, spotty connectivity. Okay. Richard Post, unmute, please. I had uh, one comment uh, that may help some, and then uh, one question. You know, the comment is that there are some universal device hubs, such as Samsung Smart Things, universal devices, and so on, that can interfa interface a wider variety of devices, like like Wink Hub and HomeKit will work with limited products. Uh, for example. Um, some of these devices can connect Logitech Harmony remote hubs, which can control audio and video devices with your lighting. And so, for example, you could push a button on a small round Samsung Smart Things that has three functions, and one push would be turn on all your surround sound devices, then it might mute your lighting, turn your thermostat on. Um, you know, things like that. Are there any workshops that discuss these universal devices? No, the, uh, this is the only workshop I guess we've put together. Um, but the Wink um, Hub is more universal than most, is my understanding. And uh, it connects with a wide variety of products. Uh, just go to their website and you'll see them all listed. I mean, it's 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 probably the most universal of any of them. The Wink 2 particularly, I think, is the one that uh, I showed in that picture. And when I was doing my research, it showed uh, probably 15 or 20 or more different uh, devices or companies that it would interface with. Yeah, that's interesting. I think um, I haven't checked out them out, but I think Samsung... Samsung, uh, I uh, have more. The only problem with Samsung is it's hub, it's, it's uh, server controlled. So if you lose your internet, Samsung won't work as the commands go to their server. The server sends commands to your devices. Um, but it's pretty simple to set up. I think they have probably thousands of or hundreds of uh, you know different devices they're compatible with. Uh, Universe Devices has Zigbee and Z-Wave modules and x10 but it's more complicated to set up mm -hmm. um, i'm not familiar with the uh um, samsung smart things but uh but i did look at the the wink uh particularly and it does it interfaces with bunches of um, different devices yeah thanks i'm gonna check that out now the samsung is cross-platform i'm an android pc user and so i like things that work across more, more devices and I believe they also have an iOS app yeah, as well. I think the wink is that. the wink is agnostic as well. It'll work okay. it's a cross platform. I'm gonna check that out. It's interesting. And it's also okay. inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting uh, workshop by the way. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Julian, how about you sharing with us and Un unmute yourself. Hey, yes. Uh... First, I just have some comments. Uh, last night, I, I looked at the uh, automation thing that you're from your first one on Facebook, or on YouTube, rather, and you had a comment about uh, what happens if somebody steals your ring doorbell. Uh, all you have to do is file a police report, uh, email it to ring, and they'll send you a brand new one. Uh, also, speaking of ring, ring and nest are have just this most superb uh, customer service that I've been across in the industry. I mean, they take you by the hand and just just take you right to your final destination. Uh, they're just unsurpassed as far as uh, helping you out. And uh, uh, I use the Schlage uh, deadbolt and latch. Uh, and as Judy was saying, you know, it'll warn you an ample time before the batteries run out. But if you should ignore them and it does go out, the, uh, the latch comes with a key and the uh, deadbolt 
has terminals on it that just look like two little raised bumps. So you put a nine volt battery across and then you can just, that'll supply the battery power to open it up. And um, so in any event, I, I like my bells and whistles. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jillian, we're having fun. What can I tell you? <laughs> I like the way it should be. Yeah, I'd ask, ask Jillian, with the battery with the two bumps, I hope that's on the inside because if I'm on the outside, can I just go around, use the battery to open up everybody's lock? No, that uh, that supplies the battery. You still have to put the code in. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. It <laughs> wouldn't do you much good on the inside because that's where you take it apart <laughs> to put the battery in anyway. Uh-huh. Pierre. Yes. Again, I'd like to make a comment on what was said about using a hub with the uh, when you have 15 bulbs that don't stay on uh, on your Wi-Fi. Given that a router that's working correctly should be able to support 254 devices, 15 is absolutely nothing. So if those lights, those bulbs, I should say, do not stay on uh, correctly, I would point the finger at the router. There's something going on with the router. Maybe it needs a reset, maybe it needs a firmware update, uh, maybe the number of uh, IP addresses has been limited, uh, but buying a hub in this case to me seems like throwing money away. Okay, who asked the question? Um, I don't remember who asked the question about the bulbs. Well, the next question to uh, ask him is what has he done to try to correct the problem? I thought That's I understood Jimmy. him to say. I thought I understood him say he had rebooted the router several times. Oh no, That's I went to I went I went to two different routers and now I'm on a G thirty one hundred by Verizon. Yeah, he's uh, I I'm not sure I I'm I'm not I haven't my, my bulbs are not running on Wi Fi, so I don't know quite what the situation could be, but it's just my feeling is that uh, there's uh, there's just too many of the same type of devices on that that's running that's causing the issue. But <clears throat> Jimmy, uh, whose wh who's Wi-Fi are you using? The name Verizon. of the company. Verizon. Verizon. Oh, gosh! I thought it might have been Spectrum. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, another question gets for that. you. Another question for you. Are you having any other difficulty with your other Wi-Fi devices? None whatsoever. Pardon? Not just, none it's whatsoever. Just, it's just the bulbs. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think that's the problem is that the. I think okay. that's a question for your friend Google. Well, I don't know if they'd answer that, but what I would do is, um, of course, the, the, um, the hubs are really not horribly expensive and it would be worth a, to, a try. And then you get more integration to some of your other uh, uh, home automation devices as well. You'll be able to control them all from that one hub. So you're, you'll get some benefits and advantages by, uh, by, in my opinion, you know, investing in one and uh, getting everything set up. If within 30 days it's still not working, you can take your hub back, keep your packaging. Yeah, that would be a good, good point, Judy. Good. I have an uh, added thing about your door locky thingy. Um, Bill James had Corporal uh, Kim Lopez from the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Department give an absolute excellent presentation. And she mentioned like if you're at the grocery store and you're using your card, uh, somebody we've all heard can take a picture of your card when you take it out and blah, blah. And she said there are I'm going to call them heat seeking for want of a better word, phones that can highlight what 
you have just pushed as your passcode. And I thought, gee, the same thing could happen to my uh, smart lock as I, my doors, I have a, a short front yard. I think somebody coming up the street uh, after I had gone in, however long it takes, could take a picture and my code could still be warm and they could automatically get in through my door. So when I put in my code and just as I'm walking in the door, I swipe my fingers over all of the buttons. And that only happens with the squishy ones. You notice the banks have metal ones. That doesn't retain the heat from your fingers. So mm -hmm. that's that's a security step as far as I'm concerned. Good. Ron Brown, unmute yourself. So uh, to answer the question, uh, my comment is this. If you, um, one of the advantages of using a smart home hub, such as the Samsung, is of course you're connecting your devices by Zigbee and Z-Wave. Now, one of the, and, and another advantage of this is that these devices, once connected, work as a mesh system and talk one to, to each other. So, so you will find that the, the coverage in your house is much better. One of the problems with Wi-Fi is coverage, and it may be if you've got all these bulbs connecting to your Wi-Fi, it may be they're sitting up in the ceiling and they're actually not getting a very good Wi-Fi signal, right? So it's, it is always better to connect through a hub. And also there's companies like SendGlad that make that make light bulb hubs, right? So rather than going and buying 15 light bulbs that you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi, which is way more expensive, buy the SendGlad hub, plug it in, and then get the bulbs to work through the hub. It works better because they're connected, as I said, like a mesh system rather than relying on your Wi-Fi. And, and I think, I, Bill, I agree exactly with you. And that's, but that's the reason. I was just did a show um, on another channel. That, well, that's why I was late. And we were talking to two or three people who had, um, who had um, Samsung hubs. And they were saying exactly that, that they found that the devices worked a lot better because of that, uh, the connection, the, the mesh connection, because they talk, one talks to the other. One device can talk to another device and say, hey, turn off. It doesn't have to go through the, uh, the Wi-Fi. So it gives you a better connection in your house. So the hub is really the way to go. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Stephanie? I noticed that all of those uh, devices seem to be at 60 watts. I don't really like 60 watt bulbs. Are they planning on increasing the wattage? Oh, that's a kind of a good question, but I think that's because of the energy. Most LED bulbs these days are, are 60 watt. I haven't found uh, them to be any hindrances having the you know brightness or anything, but Judy has a, a, a her hand up. So Stephanie, Stephanie, that was one of my worries because uh, my house has a patio cover that covers my bedroom slider and my family room slider where I live during the day, so to speak. And um, the GECs that I have, beautiful. I checked it out with the LED ones that I was already using, and these are even brighter. Okay. And I use the I use the daylight mode, so it's nice and it's warm, and you can tone it down and use different colors. When I first plugged a bulb in, I did a zoom with Bill, and I was all orange, and I said oh, I can't use these, and I bought a bunch of them, and then I turned it to daylight, and it works great. And I have two behind me, and that's it, and I'm really clear. So you just have to put in more lamps or more lights? Absolutely you... not. Thank you. Give, give, all I can say is give it a try, and you can and always think, return um, them if you don't like them. And I think as a rule, the LED bulbs are brighter than the incandescent 60-watt bulbs. And I bought mine at Lowe's. It's the only place I could find them. If there's not any more questions, uh, there's a couple things I have here in my chat that I'd like to address. Go ahead. Uh, one as a question about our hubs hardware or software. It's hardware. 
which uh, has software built into it like Z-Wave and Zigbee. Um, then uh, there's another question here. Why aren't you warning about these apps reading your cell phone data? That's something that you can control when you install your, uh, your app. You can tell it whether you, what you want it to be, what you want it to access and what you don't want it to access. Um, at least that's how I've been doing it. On the Android, it will tell you, it says, to, uh, and you also can uh, uh, have it always accessing the um, data or only accessing the data when it's required. And uh, Steve, you, can, you might want to clarify that if you're still here. Um, another question, uh, one additional video doorbell is Google Nest. I've used Ring and Nest, found the Nest to work best, had problems with Ring connecting to Mish network. That's, uh, doorbells uh, have, a, have connectivity problems uh, from the offset because remember, it's gonna be outside your house. So the only way it's gonna be able to access the Wi-Fi is if you have a extender that's located near the door, which will help boost the signal. If not, you're at the mercy of, uh, of hoping that the Wi-Fi bleeds outside to uh, connect. The best way you can check your uh, connectivity is use your smartphone to see how um, fast, how much Wi-Fi you're actually getting outside that, uh, that that space into that space, but there's a there's a built-in uh, issue with that, and I guess some connect better than others. What I have a been... comment about the thermostat. Uh, my kids got one. Th we all have Nest thermostats, and the middle kid got a new AC heating system, and lo and behold, she could either have she could only have air conditioning. The heater part didn't work and her husband worked and worked and worked and finally called the people who put in the AC and he said, oh, Nest doesn't work with everything, just like Bill said in his presentation. He said, I recommend a Honeywell. Well, the Honeywell was considerably less expensive than the Nest is that they of course can't return. And uh, her husband, who's not the you know techie person in the world, easily put it together and the, it, it changes colors, like that makes a difference because it's in their hall where nobody can see it, but it's identical to the Honeywell thermostats we both had before we went to the nests. And like Bill said, Nest wants to know this and they will send them a workaround. But by the, the time I got involved with it to tell them that, they'd already installed the Honeywell. So beware, check and make sure that it works with your AC heating unit. Now there's a, there's a schematic on uh, those uh, sites that sell thermostats that will uh, identify the wires that's required to connect it. So as I said earlier, what you need to do is find out, take the current cover off your thermostat and find out what wires are being uh, used and make a note of that, then go to the website of the mess of the thermostat you want to purchase and match those wires up with it. Uh, the, so another question here, uh, what has been done to prevent the police from accessing those door cameras? Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. Um, what are some of the web security issues with using smart features? What is the risk of being hacked? I think, uh, 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 um, it wasn't Ron, it was uh, Pierre, had some very good suggestions is that make sure your router is up to date. You have the latest firmware, strong passwords, all those things uh, uh, that you do under normal circumstances would apply to your 
your smart devices. Remember, those are really working on your Wi-Fi system to some degree. So that's your router is your stronger, your strongest defense that you have uh, uh, strong passwords and you have the latest uh, an up-to-date router, <clears throat> and that you're connected to uh, WPA w, uh, WPA2, and as Pierre says, WA3 is a, is a WPA3 is the latest one. Uh, someone says, uh, I haven't mentioned Habitat Elevation. That is an up and coming hub that's created by, uh, by users. Uh, wasn't, I'm not familiar with it, but uh, that's something I will take a look at. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Had two problems with power and internet going out. You have to be local to restore it, everything, any systems that restore it themselves. Well, um, in my situation where I've lost power, the um, devices always reconnect themselves with no problems. Now on the Hue ones, um, I have, a, and within the app, it says, do you want to connect um, the device back to its last state? And that's an option, and I have that all turned on. So I have no problems with my lights uh, resetting themselves after an outage. Anybody else have some questions? That's out of my, off of my list and Judy's list. I that's have off a of comment. My in my area, my lights were out in our my my very own personal fire evacuation zone for almost 12 hours, and when they came on, everything worked beautifully. Yeah, I have no problems with uh, with the uh, the thermostat or the doorbell or any of those things reconnecting, and I have probably about 25 uh, Wi-Fi devices. In fact, I'm almost all Wi-Fi. I have no. Uh, Ethernet connectivity for anything. And please, when you are putting your password together, don't do what I did and thought Smarty Pants made a very secure password. And when it comes time to programming that Nest thermostat and you have to turn it around and capitalize that letter and then you put it back to the beginning and then you go around to the next letter and that one's lower case and you do that one and you go back and you always mess up. Ask Bill. I stood in the corner trying to do that for quite a while one night and it happened to be in the summertime and it was night. The sweat was dripping off me and I said we'll revisit this another time. So be careful when make it secure but don't make it like that. Yeah, Howard, oh. um, because um, I know in my case, I have lots of uh, Wi-Fi devices and I have to put in the Wi-Fi password. So uh, I think mine's pretty secure, but uh, it's not overly long. It's within the requirements, but the longer you make it, the more uh, letters and characters and numbers you have to put in. Yeah, Howard Payson, go ahead. Yeah, I, I missed the uh, second session. Actually, I, I didn't sign up until uh, just a week or two ago. And uh, I did find the first session on uh, on YouTube, but uh, I would like to watch the second session. I feel like I'm really missing out on important information from that. I will add you to my list. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, and as we always, always said, if, if we can match up your uh, name in Zoom to your email address in the uh, registration, then we can make sure that we get things sent off to you. But that can happen if we don't know who you really are. <clears throat> Julian, go ahead. Last time, and last time I looked, there were a few people who aren't going to get anything. <clears throat> yep. Go ahead, Julian. Yeah, Judy, add me to that list, too, if you would. I missed the second uh, episode also. Yeah, and, th and that's because that, that video was on a uh, private channel. 
Folks, I'll be right back. Give me a minute. Judy, any kind of uh, public service announcements while we wait for yes. Bill? Yes, I will. I will do a PSA here for our good friend Bob G, who, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't have a last name. Um, <laughs> I'm Ju I'm Judy D, and he can be Bob G. If you have not had Bob G's 2020 security presentation, there is still the month of December. If you are looking for uh, something for your meeting, as usual, it is absolutely excellent. And remember, next October, that would be October 2021, when we all will still be doing this, probably at home. <laughs> and um, he has the month of October devoted to Zoom presentations. Uh, it's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And this year, he was well over 20. And as I tell people, he finally got to Australia without 19 hours of flying. And um, some of his October ones fell over into November because the October days had too many people, uh, you know, having a presentation. He can do up to three a day, you know. So bear that in mind. They are always excellent. And they change, actually they change from month to month because he keeps updating it. And if you can say a security presentation is fun, Bob G's are fun. It makes you laugh, you get some jokes, you get some funnies, and you come away going, I didn't know that about that. Oh, gee, that's something new. And that happens every time he gives a presentation to my group, and I keep my people up on security. And by golly, he's always got, a, I take notes, he's always got many things that are brand new to me. So please take advantage of him because he loves to give presentations. Jeff Meyer, go ahead and unmute and share with us. Uh, yeah, concerning, concerning those uh, thermostats, I was just, uh, I, I just wanted to state that depending on the thermostat, like the uh, Nest E compared to the third gen, it would, each of those, uh, he has less contact, if you want to say, on the back compared to the third gen, which has a lot more to, to handle the air conditioning and the heating. So that's what makes the difference on those. So each each one, and the newest model they have coming out, which is, which, uh, which which hasn't been released yet, but it's a fourth. They have a fourth gen coming out, which will which which has even less. It's just like the it's just like the E. It's just uh, but uh, but it's gonna have less too as well. So, but that's but that, 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 that's what you have to look for. You get you have to look to see what that plate has in back for all the hooking up of all your connections in the back. Yeah, as Judy has mentioned, you know everybody has to do their own research because what what might work for one doesn't always work for another. Uh, Julian. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. Bill. Oops, I was going to say while well, Bill is gone, but he's back. Uh, yeah, just really a quick sick. ring story. I'm fine now. Good. Uh, Good. Quick ring story. The first time I used the communication part of my ring doorbell, I was stretched out on the couch and and didn't feel like getting up to go to the door. But uh, a guy was at the front door, wanted to know if he could borrow my water hose to uh, water a tree they were putting in next door. I said, "Sure, go ahead." And the fun thing was. I was in New Orleans at the time, and and, and, and my and the hose was in uh, by Des Moines. <laughs> Very good. Bernice has a question. Unmute yourself, kiddo. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I I have two iPads, and when I'm on Zoom, it uses a lot of memory and it goes dead sometime in the middle of a Zoom. It, it happens um, when I'm doing other things on it too. Uh, is that a problem or? Your battery's going weak. It's not as strong as it used to be. My question uh, is how old is it? They are older. Yeah, there older you go. IPads. Yeah. Time for new ones. Or, or plug it in while you're using it so that it keeps charging itself. Okay, I'll try that. Okay, thank you. I guess I need a new one. <laughs> oh, they don't have Wi-Fi. 
So we are at the two o'clock hour. We'll leave the uh, chat box open for a minute or two. If there's no other questions, I'll remind you that we will be back here in one month for the final workshop of do it yourself or let somebody else do it. Um, you will get an email giving you the link to this uh, recording that we've made today so you can review things. Uh, let's see, the um, Linux workshop will be next Saturday or next Wednesday and then we'll take off the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and then we'll be every Wednesday in December back and forth between Linux and home automation. And I will do a far ahead plug that we will be having a very, very special workshop in January for what is gonna be happening. Judy's gonna host that one and we're gonna invite all the officers to come in and discuss where we've been, where are we going and how are we gonna get there? Anything else, Bill? Actually, you... actually oh. it's officers, members, anybody who wants to come and share their two cents worth. Okay, I forgot that we opened it all the way up. So yes, um, Bill, any final comments? No, uh, other than thank you so much for attending and um, hope to see you uh, for the final session of uh, our home automation workshop and uh, appreciate all your comments. I'll just add thank you very much for the presentation and for all the work put into it. Second thank you. that, third that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, well put on. Okay, if any of you happen to be in the western side of Florida, take care of yourself. If you're on the eastern side like my sister, in a couple of days, take care of yourself because it's coming your way. I think that's Again. it for today and thanks everybody for attending and happy veterans day happy veteran and thank you bill for your services too appreciate it see everybody next time bye-bye thank you